hey I hope you're doing well um, I thought I would just walk around my willow patch and talk to you a little bit about my willow and how it's doing this year and maybe some of the issues that I deal with um, during this time or during the growing season I pretty much don't do anything with the willow um, when it's growing I don't spray it I don't treat it I just keep an eye on it and look at it um, and that's pretty much it usually around this time I can see some issues cropping up not that I have to do something but it's just something that I like to be aware of so let's just have a walk around and I'll talk to you and see what I find So I have this patch here, um, it is a green dix, um, which means it is um, a purpurea and all summer long I have seen green fly on this. Now just a tiny bit, so usually when, I, when you have a lot of green fly um, I would probably um, treat it and you just spray um, a soapy solution onto the stems that are affected. Um, there's actually one here, here you can see. Here you can actually still see the green fly on it. Um, so all year it has been a little bit like that, um, usually on the top leaves. Um, but it was nothing too major so um, it means that now there is kind of marks on the leaves so um, it looks a little bit like these black spots black marks um, you also have um, spots like like these where it's kind of brown marks on it and um, mainly that is because of the green fly um, but as I said I didn't treat it because it was only a little bit here and there and as long as the growing tip is not affected in that it doesn't die off um, I, would, I wouldn't be too worried about it um, the willow is just going to keep growing and usually grows out of it um, but if it is an issue, if you do find that the, the growing tip is affected, you find that the leaves drop or dry up, then I would definitely treat them with soapy water. This time of year, which is it now it's the start of September, um, you might find that some of the um, bottom leaves of the willow start becoming yellow and uh, start dropping, which is perfectly normal because it's the time of year. Um, I get that question, I, I get that asked a lot because it actually can happen during the really summer um, growing year as well. Um, those um, leaves at the bottom are really the least important for the plant as long as you see that the tips are growing the plant is fine but it could start dropping those leaves even if it is dry if the plant is a little bit stressed um, that can happen especially Daphnoides feminalis do that quite quickly so usually it's nothing to worry about and probably the plant will grow through it but at this time of year um, you will start seeing those yellow leaves. This one is quite interesting. You can just see the stalks of the um, leaves are left and it's some kind of caterpillar that has been eating the leaves. But um, again, I'm not worried. The growing tip is fine. Um, and it's only one stem I can see like that. The other ones are still looking pretty healthy.
This is um, rust. It is basically just, um, it looks like a powdery, uh, a powdery substance. It's, it's bright orange yellow that uh, is on the leaves. So it's airborne. Um, usually just get little patches of that at the bottom of leaves um, during damp times in the year and most of the time it doesn't affect the plants very badly uh, but I have seen it take out um, my Viminalis from one, one year it just completely destroyed the whole plant now it recovered the year after that but in my book Viminalis is quite prone to it this one is not Viminalis, this is, um, I, I think it's a Dicky Meadows, this one, which is a purpurea. And then over here we have um, brown mall, and that usually is pretty disease free for me. I never see any issues. Um, I can see a little bit of leaf damage. Um, but it's not suffering at all. This one is my Harrison's and every single year I get these markings on the stem. Um, it seems like the stem goes um, black and dry and then it kind of seems to split as the stem keeps on growing. Um, it's all around there as well. Um, this is, um, I only get it on my Harrison's um, and it is, it is a kind of a canker. Um, so um, it doesn't seem to kill the plant because I take the stems off every single year, but it does come back. So again, it's airborne and if I would, let this plant grow um, the canker would go into the main stem eventually and kill it off but what it does mean is um, i can't really use these rods for weaving um, it's okay if there might be the odd little patch on it and i can work with that it's no problem but these stems are pretty much covered in them so um, uh, it means that they might snap in these areas, the skin would break, but also wouldn't look very nice. is a slender tip and it's a variety that I get um, these um, galls on each year. Um, these are caused by a little midge that lays its eggs um, in the rod and then as the rod grows it makes these bumps. It has little chambers and uh, after only a few weeks really those midges um, will hatch and put make a second batch um, 
So this would be the second batch of um, midges and they are going to overwinter in my rod and then hatch again in spring. So last year there was loads and loads and loads of them. This year, thank God, there's still some there but it's way less. Um, it is not the end of the world to have them but they do tend to destroy your rods so you lose a few rods um, out of your harvest when this happens. So what I do um, to get kind of get rid of them is um, I take all the swellings out and I burden them, make sure none of them can overwinter in any rods. And the same goes for any, I try to find any wild um, purpureas and take out any swellings that I see in there as well and burn those. What we have here is, is um, the wild willow is mostly the caprea um, willow, so it's not, this variety is a purpurea, so the midges that I'm talking about only really sit on a purpurea, well these ones anyway. So I make sure that um, I harvest all my purpurea and don't let them overwinter in the field. There must be some wild ones somewhere because they seem to come back every year. But I seem to be able to manage them. So it's, it's good news. I'm delighted about that. I still have them, but um, definitely not as much as last year. You might see a lot of D's in your willow as well uh, during the growing season. Um, they're usually okay, um, but they can be tricky um, because it's a little spider that pulls those uh, top leaves together and puts eggs in there. Um, it's like a little nest on the inside. Um, the only tricky bit is that if the leaves don't grow through it, um, it means that the growing tip uh, stops growing and the rod makes side shoots um, which is not what you m want really for basket making. If there's side shoots on them then it probably means that you'll have to throw the rod away. You can't really use it anymore. Um, so it's a little bit of a nuisance but as long as it's not a major issue again I leave it. I find that I grow my willow um, it's part of uh, of the environment of so yeah you're gonna lose some but you're also going to be able to harvest a lovely willow harvest so just to point out here these guys are not growing in any plastic and they're also cut back higher so they're on kind of hip height um, this is actually uh, Daphnoides and there's a nice crop on it. Why do we um, let them grow higher? It's mainly to stop the grass growing over the stump, but it's also easier to harvest um, when you don't have to bend down as much. Plants also seem to like it more. They are spaced slightly further apart than um, the commercial kind of um, guidelines. So these would be a foot a foot and a half maybe apart I suppose and there's a nice um, big section in the middle that is not planted at all um, yeah it works for us so this is a yellow variety it's um, called Vitalina it's an Alba variety I can see again here there's already yellow leaves on them so they're already kind of starting to slow down and dropping some leaves and you can see the trunk um, it's a double one this one um, again is higher off um, 
off the ground and you can see the amount of rods on that this plant is only probably three years old um, it's only just coming into production it have full production in about five years maybe six years growing them a little bit further apart without plastic on a higher stem means that it takes a little bit longer for them to be fully established Here I can see some of the willow fence from the inside that's the fence there's a good bit of growth on the top this year that we will have to weave back in and cut back so what happened here in these beds is quite interesting so this bed was dug first then we, you actually saw it in a video where we put cardboard down and then planted the sticks through them. They're doing really well. They're very nice and big, which is um, quite surprising for first year's growth. And of course there's some weeds because the, we didn't put a plastic down. But what will happen in winter time, we're gonna cut these ones back and then leave the donkeys to clean out the weeds and stuff around it. On this side, we didn't dig it, um, but we did put uh, uh, newspapers down, kind of to mulch the grass, to keep the grass down. What happened here, the willow is still growing, but it is not even half as big as the one beside it. Um, even though most of the plants are alive, they're definitely, definitely struggling. They will pull through though. Um, but it will take a little bit longer. It just means that the small plants here had, had to struggle a little bit um, for food um, because the weeds weren't completely dug in and turned over. They came back away more quickly than the ones on this side. So that really made a big difference. Um, so it's interesting to see uh, what happened. <laughs> I just realized here on the camera you can probably hardly see the willow but there's uh, small plants growing in between these and then these are slightly bigger but there's also quite a bit of weeds. here it's um, Brittany green which usually does really well for me but in this spot where it is here every year it seems to get a kind of a, 
I think it's uh, willow blight, um, which means, as I was saying uh, earlier about the bottom leaf drop, this one um, has the same thing. The leaves don't go yellow, but they go, um, they dry out, they curl up and they drop off. So you can see that here, this is um, a shoot that should still be full of leaves all the way down and it isn't. So there's just a little tip here that it still has a few leaves on it. Um, and then the leaves that are down here are kind of um, shrivel shriveling up as well. Again, it's airborne. It's not something I can really do anything about, um, uh, other than pray that they'll they'll pull through. Uh, it just means that this year the willow is a little bit smaller, but it's still fine. It it will still um, I still be able to use it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the plants aren't as healthy. I'm growing the same variety on the other side of the field, and they're completely fine over there. So. Uh, that's the, the nature of willow. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That is the main reason why I say try as many different willow varieties because what might work for me might not work for you and vice versa. So um, it depends on um, soil, it depends on climate. Um, I have a hunch that the willow growing here is a little bit more sheltered. Um, it is a little bit more in between trees. And that might mean that the um, air doesn't circulate as much as it does up there at the higher part of the field, meaning that, you know, diseases, um, airborne diseases can sit a little bit more on the leaves. They don't dry out as quickly. But that's just my hunch. Um, as in everything here, I'm not an expert. I'm just talking about what I'm experiencing here and what I've kind of learned over time. And this variety is a variety called Lancashire Dix. It is um, beautiful. I love working with it. Um, it grows a little bit um, too curved, but I still just love, love, love working for, with it. It has a, a grey bluey um, colour on the back. Um, but the issue with these ones is that they're very small. So the first few years, they would grow up to five, maybe six foot for me. And then uh, maybe for the next two years, they were really nice. And now they've, they don't grow more than four feet. So they're tiny, they're pain to cut. Um, um, and I've seen them grow way bigger in other areas. So it also means then that there's loads more weeds growing in between it because they're so small um, and I will try and grow them in a different um, area and it's just to see would that make a difference and I think this is my very favorite variety at the moment it's Flanders red for me it doesn't grow too big uh, it has lots of shoots on it, there's never anything wrong with it and they're not too thick, they're lovely and flexible, it dries a na nice dark reddish colour and it's very flexible to work with and I just really really love it.
as I said before, um, I don't really do much with um, any diseases. I don't spray, I don't do any chemicals on my willow. Whatever works, works. And I feel um, when you grow willow, you provide a habitat for other species to exist in. And um, some uh, varieties do well, some don't. So just plant a wide variety of willow um, to kind of get a balance. You lose some, but you m mainly gain a lot of um, willow th that you can use, but you also provide a habitat, as I said, for other little creatures that badly, badly need it. So um, that's the way how, how I look at it. And um, yeah, um, if you want to know about uh, the willow varieties that I grow that I really like, uh, there's another video, I'll leave the link below this one. Um, that just goes into a little bit more specifics about willow varieties and um, yeah if you have any more questions or um, suggestions or um, if you want to tell me about what you grow and what you really like just leave a comment below and um, I would love to hear from you. Hope this was helpful, hope you enjoyed it and we'll chat again soon. Take care, bye!